What's up, everybody? We're back. It's me, resident super villain, Mr. Jay Washington. And I'm Mr. Mikey Blurred with City Marshall. And we are here for the season two, episode nine, season finale review of Doom Patrol on the DC Universe HBO Max. If you ain't seen the episode yet, you know the drill. Come on back. Spoilers, all that good shit. Uh, first of all, sad this is over. This is nine episodes. I mean, it, it didn't really feel over. It was left on such a cliffhanger. I mean, I know technically it's over, but like, you know, it didn't really feel over. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because, so. you know, they had to stop production because of COVID. I right. get it. Right. And and like it was supposed to be one more episode. So it was supposed to be 10. So right. there's one episode we're missing, which culminate, which, you know, closes up everything. But damn, this one went out on a note. I like, mean, and that that's kind of the problem. You know what this feels like? This feels like, and I, again, I know this is COVID's fault, not not the actual production team. Um, this feels a lot like what Titans kind of felt like uh, when they ended season one. Yeah, but the never... problem is Titans scheduled they shit like that. I no, 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 no. I know, I know. I, I completely understand that. I'm I'm saying I'm just saying the feels that it gives me. I'm not saying that that Doom. The, like I said, the production staff didn't do this. This is not on them. This is because Miss Roan is a heinous bitch and took everybody's everything from them. But, uh, but the, the <laughs> yeah, it kind of gave me the similar vibes. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the episode, but knowing that I'm not going to get answers to this until maybe next year, if at all. Because have we gotten news if they're getting renewed or not yet? No, we haven't gotten renew- news on any of the DC shows. So, like, yeah. we haven't heard anything about Harley Quinn. Uh, we just the only one we've gotten some news about is Star Girl, because they're going. Well, they're on CW, aren't they? Well, they're going permanently to CW. So mm-hmm. the, what it is, Star Girl is as of now a DC Universe show, but it goes on Star. It goes on CW the next day, but it's still considered a DC Universe show. Yeah. Next season, it's officially just a straight CW show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with Doom Patrol, haven't heard anything about season three. And the thing is. It more than likely, if there is a season three, it's gonna stay straight to, uh, straight to HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, because DC Universe, they aren't doing much for them mm-hmm. anymore. Because it's like it's like almost just slowly fading it out. You know what I'm saying? No, I and, feel you. And plus, I don't mind it being on HBO Max anyway because HBO Max gives it a way better budget. Right. No, I get it, and I, it's funny because I just pulled up the I just pulled up the uh, the DC Universe like Wikipedia, and so what? Titans has another season already. They mm-hmm. they were renewed for a third season before all this started. Right. Uh, Doom Patrol. It just says co production and distribution with HBO Max through season two. Um, Swamp Thing obviously was canceled. Thank Jesus. Uh, but actually, you know, they bring they're bringing the episodes back to CW. Uh, what of Swamp Thing? Mm-hmm. Gross. So, but they're uh, not. They didn't say they're doing a second season. They just said the first season. But why? Uh, they need. Think about it. Nobody was able to film anything, so you need content to fill up time. Yeah, but Swamp Thing. I know. Right. Yeah, it's bad, dude. It's bad enough that you could literally take a brand like the CW, which is set in stone, and do genu- genuine damage to it. Like it's a bad show, bro. I know like, what you and I both know. We did. A, I know. Yeah, I, know. I, I don't know why we did all ten of those episodes, but we did. We and stuck through it. Yeah, we really. <laughs> no, we did. We 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 powered through that shit. Uh, what Star Girl episodes air the next day on the CW, right. uh, renewed uh, by the CW for a second season to air mm-hmm. exclusively on their network. No plans for episodes after the first season to release on DC Universe. Young Justice acquired by from Cartoon Network, starting with Outsiders. It has been renewed for a fourth season. Um, Harley Quinn, nothing, and then DC Daily obviously canceled, unfortunately. DC mm. Universe All Star Games, also. So, yeah, it's but we haven't heard anything, but nonetheless, like you said, this is this is actually the penultimate episode, technically, you know? but not really. Oh, no, 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 I know what you're saying, yeah, technically, yes, because again, in the order the episodes come out because of what happened, this is the finale, yes. Yeah. But if the 10th episode was to have to have had happened. This would have been the penultimate, and it would have been a great lead up to the finale. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. The fact you see Miranda's whole tale, like we finally got the story of Miranda, and yeah, finally, you know, we finally got because we always knew that she was the one, she was the personality that was helping Kay the most in life, right? And it was the one, well, not. not 
not only that, it's the fact that she was the one that got Kay away from their father. She's the one right, that right. was like, we're getting the hell out of here. And, uh, you know, and that was the thing. But she still, for as hard as she was, still had this soft spot and she fell in love with this boy. Um, and she was, what was she, a waitress? Is that a what wait- it was? Wait- and wait- this, wait- this wait- dude was spitting some game and she giggled. And then the next thing you know, like, they, they, they hanging out and then they shacking up and... You know, spoiler alert, because we're not going to. We didn't really say that up top anyway. I did. But, I always do. Oh, I thought maybe we forgot it, but no. I was going to say it's fine. I mean, uh, since we're not going bit, we're just kind of go by each person's storyline here. Um, they're kind of having some troubles. Miranda keeps talking in the mirror. You don't see her go to the underground, but she keeps talking in the mirror like, hey, this is good for us. Like, we want to be able to grow into a regular person. I like, was wondering too, like, and sorry to cut you off because I'm glad you brought that up. Her saying that. Like, how many other personalities were there at the time? You know what I'm saying? That's a question. Uh, I would assume that they're all, everyone but Jane. Uh, you because think everyone been available? Other than Jane, yeah. Jane obviously manifests in the middle of this, what, what I was about to get to. I mean, well, that's the thing, is unless they give a, unless they give us another story to show, and this is another time she got traumatized, the idea is implied that those personalities, like all of her real trauma, her major source of trauma was, um, you know, at uh, 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 what's what's it called? Um, uh, uh, dealing with the dad, dealing with the well, yeah. dealing with the with all of that, you know. So they're together. He, he feels that they're kind of in a rut, and so he's like, "What if we, you know, went to this party?" And then they get to the party, and she kind of didn't want to be there, but she's cool. But then, like all of a Wasn't sudden, a house party. Wanted a housewarming party for their crib. They threw it at. I didn't think it was a housewarming party. I was it a housewarming? Oh yeah. well, well I, I just knew they went to a house party, which then they found out was actually a giant swinger party or an or, or an orgy. And this was essentially like a situation where, and that's the thing with with Kate, Miranda, this mm. crazy Jane collective here being heavily scarred in the whole sex situation she's already kind of uncomfortable about it but she got it goes with it but then as you know the the homie's friend starts like getting in getting it in she like goes from like just deal with it just deal with it like i'm sorry y'all i'm sorry to like a full-on breakdown to jane manifesting and calling everybody out calling every dude was in there because they just wanted a new piece of pussy and that's why they were there and every woman was just signing up like maybe a couple of you were doing, but most of y'all are just doing it because you were just lap dogs to these men and you just whatever. Now fuck all yeah, of y'all. When she fern when Jane finally manifests, she was like, "So we finna get back to fucking, huh? Who wants, to, who wants, who wants to stick it in me next? Our, our bro, she like she's a badass. I'm trying to tell you, man. And I think that that's the thing that's the most. Like interesting. we were train, you know. Like I was like, yo, like she just called it all. But I think that that's the thing that's so interesting. If you notice each one of these personality seems to come out when they when they manifest seems to be kind of more intense or more badass than the one before now the interesting thing i i don't remember jane doesn't have any powers i know that this happens because of niles but jane doesn't have any powers right right jane just, doesn't jane has she's no just, she's just the primary yeah okay because uh i don't think miranda has any either i guess maybe no. you could say like her willpower but i mean yeah she's just she she's the strong but that's not really an but ability I, yeah, yeah, you know no, no, I, no, no, I know. I'm trying to think, uh, because not, I, I obviously they all have different something, but like, I'm just curious. I wonder, Doom Patrol. Show well, crazy. I think the thing is, there are personalities that have abilities, but there are personalities that are just personalities, like, right, you know, they're just per- different personalities. Like, right. th- the belief is that all 64 have something. But all 64 don't, unless right. Jane hasn't discovered hers. Right, 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 right. You see what I'm saying? Oh, um, bitch, I figured it out. Now I know. Okay, so spoiler alert again, but again, we're jumping around. It doesn't fucking matter. I finally figured out the Miranda situation and why that happened. At the so end? In, in general, because, yes, we find out by the end of it that Miranda is not Miranda. Miranda yeah. is clearly a manifestation, but I'll tell you exactly what it is, because we were like... So she just had a personality of the dad. Well, nigga, remember the candle maker makes your imaginary friends come to life. So he is the one that act by going in when he went into the underground is when Miranda showed up afterwards. Oh. This nigga activated Miranda as in like the imaginary friend, the father. He just 
like that's exactly what they would do. They would expect the father to do some sort of fucked up shit. So he took the former Miranda, but that's what he is. The candle so maker, the candle maker is still in underground. It's not that he's still in the underground, but remember what he does because uh, uh, Kipling told us this. He takes your imaginary friend and that's what he uses as a weapon to fuck you up. And right. so just like we find out that we're going to get to that Cliff's imaginary friend was Jesus who fucked him up and, and, and uh, what uh, 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 cyborgs uh, was his dad as a Dr. cowboy, cowboy. <laughs> Dr. Cowboy. And then you had Rita had the paper doll that she made with like her mom's eyes and all that other yeah. shit. So everybody's imaginary friend, but then they, they, while they seem like they're nice are actually there to fuck you up. And so it was some, but it has to fuck with your mental. And if you remember, because of the personalities, the underground is built so you can't just fuck with Kay's mental. You literally yes. have to get through all of the personalities to do so. So when the candle maker came down and killed Baby Doll and uh, uh, Flame, 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 uh, Flame, 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 Flame and Katie. Katie came in and killed the two of them. Remember, he was in their mind. He had time to go in there and make a fucking imaginary friend. The imaginary friend was Miranda, aka the dad spirit or whatever the fuck that shit was. And has been slowly killing Jane or Kay's personalities left and right, so then he could end up essentially killing Kay because he can't kill her because of all the personalities. Because, right? Because if you notice, he like obviously there are random things, you stuff melting and shit, but his main power that he's been known to do is to bring out an imaginary friend to fuck with you, dude. Uh, I just unraveled this motherfucking mystery. No, like I, it's, hmm. it's weird because it just came out of nowhere. Like this thing was like. I got it. And I was like, the fuck are you talking about? I just, um, it, it was purely because, I'll tell you why. It's purely because I didn't actually read the full thing in this Wikipedia. They just said, miraculously, the can, uh, uh, Miranda returned after the candle maker killed Katie and Baby Doll. And I was like, oh, bitch, he did the same shit that he did to the other four. Yep. Oh, which, who was the imaginary friend for Larry? Larry doesn't have one. What, what, did they, what did they do to Larry? He saw Kipling. He saw he, Kipling full of wax, and that was what it that was scared him in a sense. Remember, oh. he told he told Cliff, "I never had an imaginary friend growing up." Okay, and Cliff was like, "That's the saddest shit I've ever heard." Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, since so you brought it up, well, we go back to Jane because, like, damn, that shit. Was, okay, that's fucking trippy because because uh, we knew that I was just like, how all of a sudden after all this time, the dad, like the ghost of the dad was able to just do this and now it clicks if the candle maker brings imaginary friends to life this nigga it's brought weird. the problem is it's kind of weird at the same time because remember when the train when the conductor stops the train yeah. when she passes out mm -hmm. like I, I i guess i kind of get it because she was like do you know what the girl wants and, and i i get the whole candle maker part where you're coming from but it's like fuck that was like miranda to the fullest like but that, but but if you notice though, based off of everything that we've kind of seen about Miranda, is she strong and like kind of a hard ass sure, but not to the level that this Miranda was like, not only like, cause think about how Dr. Cowboy, think about how the paper doll, think about how Jesus was treating all of the rest of the Doom Patrol, mm. you're seeing the same elements out of Miranda. You know what I'm saying? This kind of insidious, like, ah, it's me, I'm back. Like all that kind of stuff is like, nigga, did you hear what I said? Like. This I, is said, true. I know what she wants, right? And that's yeah, what we all care about, right? Because like, actual Miranda, that makes sense, because actual Miranda is timid. She's she's strong-willed as fuck, because remember, like, during the exorcism, my name is Miranda, you keep this shit up, I'll do whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? She climbed yeah, out of the well. In the episode itself, how when she's when she meets the guy... Well, because she, she's, she got softened, she fell in love. That's why. Said, right. And so, but even before, you know, even she had this hesitation, like, this is good for us. Whereas when we finally see after the, after the orgy and the manifestation of Jane, where we see Miranda go talk to Kay, Kay closes the door on her. That's when Miranda kills herself. So now, okay. Congratulations, Winston. You did it. I solved the fucking mystery. Didn't even have the last episode to confirm, but I figured that shit though. Fuck out, son. Hey, man. Shouts out to uh, this is something from watching this show. Uh, can we go back to imaginary friends? We got to talk about one of the best imaginary friends that we saw that we wouldn't believe would have been an imaginary friend. Dr. Cowboy. No. Nah. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was funny in itself. It gave me some Cowboy Curtis like kind of vibes, to be I honest with you. <laughs> hey, Pee Wee. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you ready to draw, partner? 
<laughs> no, so, when, when you thought I was going to die, nigga, I'm imaginary. What you doing? <laughs> like The best is Cliff Steele's imaginary friend, Jesus. <laughs> and he's like, Jesus, what are you doing? And Jesus up against the <laughs> Jesus beat the shit out of Cliff, bro. Like, beat the shit out of Cliff. Ripped his arm off, poked his eye out. Like, was just the whole time. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? The fact that Jesus, uh, Jesus, that the fact that like when this was all said and done, and he was done fighting Jesus, my nigga exploded into uh, God knows how many different pieces. Dude, Um, I was like, holy shit! Because like you just saw the head, the hand, all this. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, my God. Like, they had to do something because, again, this this was a heavy episode. Like, I'll go back because the Jane situation, no matter how you deal with it, is very heavy. Mm -hmm. Like, Larry shit seems heavy because, again, him coming to terms with who he is sexually, who he is, how he left his family. Mm -hmm. Cliff coming to terms with him being a fuck up. Rita coming to terms with her just constantly trying to prove she's worth it. And Cyborg not knowing who he wants to be. They're all stories and they're kind of deep. But Jane shit makes everything heavy. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Jane shit makes it super heavy. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not that everybody else's isn't. It's just that. No, I'm, not saying, I'm, not deep. I'm just yeah, saying the, yeah, way, yeah, the, yeah. the gravity of it. Right. The, the gravity of Jane's story is so heavy. Because, again, this orgy that jumps off, you're watching it. And then you just watching her land there like she still has her clothes on. Yeah, you get well, what I'm not, saying. Not only that, you just see, you see her lock up, and it's because that's the whole thing is that yep. she has not processed that trauma. Like, yes, the personalities are there to protect her, but she has not pro- like processed her sexual trauma because before Jane even gets there, if I remember, at one point Scarlet Harlot shows up, doesn't she? If I remember, because there's a point where she was like, "All right, who's trying to go next?" Like Scarlet, it, it clearly seems like Scarlet Harlot shows up first. Oh, you talking about when she first after? No, no, that's Jane the whole time. When she's talking, when she's talking, when she's, she's, when she's getting, when she's ripping them. Yes, that's Jane. I'm talking. There's a point where one of the personalities is like, "Who's trying to fuck?" Like before Jane ultimately snaps. I even think that right when the orgy starts, Miranda's there. She's kind of uncomfortable, but then she's like, "Yeah, okay, let's do it." Like I think. Oh, that's Scarlet Harlot. I think she shows up. Okay. For I get what you're saying now. Yeah, I mean that could be that could be the case, or, or. It could literally just be Miranda being like, I'm trying to please him. You see what I'm saying? Because I, I agree, it could be Scarlet Harlot, but it could be Miranda being like, I want to please my man. He's saying I should open up. This is what I've been trying to do. I'm trying to move forward and open Bro, up. When she hit him in the nose at that, when she was done with her speech and shit, said, Yeah, just like, <laughs> out, he was like, Miranda, the fuck? He was like, uh, She was like, Uh, my name is Jane. Like, and walked out. But here's the one thing I love about certain characters and actors and actresses. And you and I as actors know this, especially when it comes to nudity scene. There are some people who will quickly be like, show it all, whatever. Then there are actors who hold themselves to a high level of dignity. Like, no, mm-hmm. I'll give you skin, but you're not going to show the parts of me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like we see her drop the towel, we see her back, we don't even see her ass. Like I, I appreciate that. Like we didn't need to see that. Well, because I also th- there's a couple things here. I think first of all, it's not relevant to the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think maybe having the random extras and stuff, it is so you can point out the like you don't need to show everything. You saw like maybe half a titty here and ass cheek there, but like. You 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 needed to in like to show off the fact that it's an orgy, but if you keep it in consideration that Jane K, whatever you want to call the the we'll just call them you know the underground as, mm-hmm. as, as a collective, they are literally someone or some ones that have been through sexual trauma. It wouldn't be inappropriate to show off her naked body or her actually going at it because. She has been through said trauma. I no, think I'm talking happened. about. I'm not talking about the moment in the orgy. I'm talking about her walking out. Remember, she drops the sheet and everything. No, 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 no. I know that. I'm saying, especially because that was supposed to be even an, an empowering moment of her being. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's, why I guess that's where I'm going. I, the, that's that's all I'm saying is that you have a situation where you're you're talking about someone with sexual trauma. It is not. It is not appropriate to show her nudity. You know what I'm saying? It's more that she's like kind of taking her shit back. Is is kind of what that is. So I think that that was really well done 
uh, by the director here. Yeah, when well, uh, you get where I'm going with it, well, the reason yeah, I brought yeah, it up, yeah, 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 yeah. the same type of scenario happen in so many other TV shows and film, whereas like the director or whatever is like, we have to show the nudity. We we need to see your body. Like sometimes it ain't necessary. I mean, if you notice that there wasn't any, uh, there was some in season one of Game of Thrones with Khaleesi, but after that, if I'm not mistaken, you got implications and maybe a shoulder here or like a side, but you yeah, never, that, saw yeah. naked, never saw her naked again after that. Um, which I think it was because, you know, they got some flack for like, you know, she wasn't, uh, she wasn't raped in the books and they just, uh, they made, like, the rape the happen, yeah. and they made the rape happen. But then I think also from the standpoint that you were just like, well, this is the character that we're building. We're not, it's not to say that nudity isn't powerful, but for the most part, if you're showing it, especially in Game of Thrones, you're just showing it to show it. There's nothing that's happening that like by being naked, I am whatever. I feel like the right. last time they did it was when she birthed her dragons at the end of season one. And that made logical sense. She was reborn through fire. fire. There was a powerful level of, you know what I'm saying? Right. That Absolutely. made sense. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're getting we're getting way off base here, but I, I mean, it's a good, yeah, good because there's so much you can compare, and and I, and I think the reason we get off base when it comes to this subject, when it comes to Jane, we did that when we first saw the underground. Mm -hmm. I remember that in our review. We both had that moment where it's you see this and you go because you get to, you have to compare it to other different things you've experienced and seen yeah. on television and film to for people who may not get it. Like everybody who watches Doom Patrol, like there are a lot of people now because of our reviews are just starting to watch it. So they don't get it in full yet. Right. But when we break it down, like, OK, so this is what you saw. Now compare it to seeing this or compare it to seeing that. You get what I'm saying? So we do that. Uh, Dorothy is like, fuck this for the battle this nigga. And her mama comes in. First of all, Niles is dying like a month. <laughs> Niles on the ground. Just Dorothy come to me. Just close your eyes. And Dorothy like, ah! <laughs> like, first of all, you can't be a father with that much. Please close your eyes. You think you got some dad control, nigga? You are on the ground crying, bro, and crying. bro, crying like like doing some old school Professor X. They done flip my shit. The Magneto done flip my chair, shit. Because you know he loves to. Magneto loves to fuck with Charles all the time. Be like Charles. Flip. And he's just like, ah! <laughs> like if, you have it, if, you, if you haven't watched, I showed this to you once, didn't I? Yes, you did. You know, you know, like like Professor X. Yeah, it's it's like a good five or six minutes of Professor X screaming in the 90s cartoon. It's Everything just like, I banish you with the power of ah! ah! Which is kind of why, I don't know, like obviously he's a tell I always thought, like until seeing more recent iterations, that Charles Xavier was a little bitch because I just, I, I don't know why, but then I think about it and I'm like, he didn't really do anything. He was essentially like Zordon with the communicator being like, X-Men, I need you to go over here and deal with blah, blah, blah. But my nigga didn't do anything. And it was a rarity you saw him in action. Because first of all, here's why. And I know we're going off a tangent. He had that big ass hover wheelchair, which. <laughs> but like, it, you can't install some weapons in that bitch. Like, I don't understand yeah, what the problem he is. He had blasters in that motherfucker. Like, he hit the button. The doo -doo -doo -doo. Like, so, like a like a ray gun, a taser, like if you can't make it non-magnetic, like you, you got beast, like you got beast and forge, you can't find a way to make it a non-magnetic ass chair. So that Magneto can't keep we fucking you. Magneto gets, a, Magneto gets a goddamn helmet to stop you from getting in his head, and you can't figure out how to protect yourself. Like for real. <laughs> All of a sudden, ah, Eric, ah, <laughs> bro, bro. My favorite one is. I, Charles Xavier, power banish you with the power of ah! <laughs> <laughs> with the dark feet the power you, of ah! ah, you, you are driving me insane. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I'm watching it as soon as this is over. I'm watching that. So, uh, Dorothy, her mom shows up. Like I said, when Niles is crawling, her mom shows up. And Niles is like, oh, uh, don't do this shit. This is your fault. And the mom is like, fuck what you're talking about. Hey, child, you ain't a child no more. Like, I mean, the mama was just straightforward, like, grow the fuck up. Put these boots on. But you know how it's, it's funny how that happens? There's always going to be one parent, and a lot of times it is being the parent of the same sex, that, like, the other one is babying you, and, then, and that parent is like, nah, strap up, go kick their ass. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I... 
I get it because the cave woman was like, it was my responsibility to fight the candle maker and imprison him. And now you're, you're an adult. You need to handle your business. This is what we do. Right. Like, like you found out, it's a generational curse. Mm -hmm. It's a curse to the tribe. It's generational. So it's everybody's responsibility to keep him. And then she, the mama tried to give her that little flint spear. She was like, you need a weapon. Girl, be like, no, nah, bitch, I'm good. And I would have bladed up the fucking. A try like with four machete blades and the Thors and Mildor at the end. Like she go when when this shit returns, hopefully very soon. She go the first thing we should see is us smacking the shit out the candle maker with it. Oh my but god! Like, I guess, again, like I said, it's so much. It, it makes me upset that we don't get the payoff right away. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's it's a little. It's it definitely bums me out because it's a situation where, I mean, you have. Um, you know, you have people that like we're getting really excited about this. And again, this is not on the production team, but you you had such a wonderful buildup. Mm. And it would be one thing if it was like it ended like even mid season and it was like uh and we'll be back when we can come back. But to get literally to the finish line and collapse, and again, not on the production team, just the way things worked out. That's fucking rough, man. Cause I told you, I told you what happened with Empire. Empire's ass had two more episodes left, and they were like, Oh, we gotta shut it down, COVID. So they just said all right, fuck it. And the Empire was saved, and Jamal used to be in the trash can. All right, there we go. And happy Empire. <laughs> yeah, guys, like, but again, like you bring up with Titans earlier, their plan was unfortunate. Like, they didn't plan. Like, theirs was planned out. Like, our season one finale is going to be a big cliff cliffhanger where our season two opening should have been at the end of season one. And th that one was planned, and we both were like, the fuck? Because, like, that's literally how we were. And we were very upset, because even when it started, you were like, oh, 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 this is what y'all waited for? No, bro, we, we talked about this. Because uh, I, I remember making this analogy when we saw the season two premiere. I was like, nigga, this would essentially be like you watching the NBA finals. It's tied up. It's game seven. And they go, and we'll see y'all in October. And you're like, bitch, what? And then you come back in October, it don't even really look like the same squad or no shit. And you're like, yeah, old <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like LeBron ain't even in fighting shape yet. Like Steph Curry out here, he done broke his own ankles trying to, you know, uh, deal with the problem. Like, huh? <laughs> like <laughs> you got a drinking problem. Like, he like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it just, it was so out of place. It would literally be like, or even if you want to take it less, like in a series, and you want to make it you do the NFL playoffs and you make the Super Bowl at the start of the next season. The shit just doesn't make sense. You know, yeah. you finish what you started. And that's that's why I fell off base. Again, I do not hold that against Doom Patrol here. It just gave yeah. similar vibe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. is, is there anything else you really want to talk about? Because we kind of hit all the major points. I think we hit all the major points. I think that's it, man. It's just waiting to hear what happens. What was Kipling's friend again? It was something weird as fuck. Some 15th century uh, queen puppet. Some puppet from the 15th century. That it was, was, beating, was beating his ass. Beating his Because yeah. it was even like, your imaginary friend is this? He was like, bitch, it was the 15th century. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, Kip was getting his ass whooped all season. I just want to be real. Like, he was a badass in season one. Remember, he got he got caught up with in Dumb Patrol. His damn self. He put the mask yeah. on him. He got caught up, and now he's getting his ass whooped. But like, is Kipling still got the, the mojo? Thing he he got uh, on, in Dumb Patrol. He got caught on purpose. Remember, because he was trying to die. He said it. He was trying to die so he can be with Baphomet. He's but trying. It, but I'm just saying, like my my, I don't know. For someone that was supposed to be essentially Constantine, he's looking like an ass hat. I mean, so. he he's a wizard, but I don't think he's that like supreme level so it is what it is man but we want to know what you think about the season finale we understand it was cut short we get why it's cut short so don't be like they messed up cutting it short like they had no choice let's let's make sure we say that they had no choice episode nine was what you got everything shut down but we want to know what you think in the comments below all right so go ahead and like subscribe click on the notification bell to find out when we drop some more videos um we were told we got to find something to talk about because here's the deal Star Girl is almost over. He never joined in with me. Wouldn't That's have mattered. It's, it wouldn't have mattered because it's about to be over now. And then this is done. So he took Winston gave a suggestion that we should watch Indian Matchmaker. I was which like, I think, which I think I'm gonna say this, like, because you kind of have have cornered cornered like the the uh 
the comic book and i mean i know i'm airing this out on air but whatever the fuck you, you got like the comic book and all that kind of stuff i think why don't we do that one over on my channel we'll do the indian matchmaker that like the trash tv shit we can do on mine <laughs> so then you don't have to sully your name and because you know i already talk about the shit anyway i mean and i mean i don't care we could do it over there either or yeah i, mean, I don't mind I just feel like you know we, we we both building shit up, so we'll, we'll. It sounds like I mean, are you down? Did you watch it? No, I haven't had a chance to yet. I was oh, gonna, nigga. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it because I did. You beat a parter, bro. <laughs> what? When uh, beat someone named a parter, and then there's another dude. I'm trying to remember his name. I want to say it's like, uh, no, because that's the teacher. I can't remember the brother's name. But his mom runs all that shit. She's like, "You're getting married by December, bitch. It's April. Like, what? Well, what did you say? You better you pick somebody. Give them like twenty matches. I don't like any of them." She's like, "I swear to God, you messing up my blood pressure. If you don't hurry up, because your brother can't have no baby until you get married." It's like, why can't he have a baby? What does my life have to do with his? You better get married, son. Like, it's it's hilarious. It is absolutely hilarious, bro. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we're at right now. Oh, what would you make the episode? We didn't we didn't talk about I, that. You know what? It had me so high, and I had to watch it knowing this was it. So to call it a season finale, it's a four and a half. I gave it a little bit lower. I mean, it was a good episode, but I, I don't think I've given below fours in a while. I got to give it like a three, honestly. Like I, I, it left me so wanting, it hurt, and like that's the problem. And I think maybe call that call that bias because mm. I know that we're not getting anything else. But that genuinely, to me, like it, and it doesn't. I know they did the best they could, but it's not like a cliffhanger at the end of a season where like. Woo, we beat the big bad, and then, you know, uh-oh, a new threat is coming to Central City. Like, you know what I'm saying? It literally left us in the middle of it, and again, not their fault, but that's just how it makes me feel. Like, I can't take that context away from it, you know? So. Makes sense. Makes all the sense in the world, bro. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J. Washington, M-R-J-A-Y. He should know how to spell Washington. The Patreon, the Supervillain Squad, it's the same thing. Patreon.com, Mr. J. Washington. Uh, check out the one-on-ones with the supervillain that's up here on the channel. That's for the members of the squad, $25 and up, man. It's like a meet and greet, but way more personal. You know most meet and greets you go, you pay for, you pay like $30, $40. You go to meet whoever you want to meet. You shake their hand. You take a picture and then buy. This, we sit down for over an hour, at least an hour, talking about whatever it is they want to talk about. Now, what I want to talk about is what they want to talk about. And we've been having a blast with them. So check that out. Uh, Mad Titan Podcast, everywhere you get your podcast from, y'all know the drill on that. Blurs in the Hood every Tuesday with me and this fella. That's something that's still happening weekly over on the Blurs in the Hood channel. Uh, YouTube.com slash Blurs in the Hood, B L E R D S, the letter N T H E. H -O, o D and on our Twitch channel. And because I just got my capture card, and when I figure out how to connect it right, I'm gonna start playing Sega Genesis on our Twitch channel. Hey man, go for it. And then uh, you know me, Winston A. Marshall, uh the Swaggy Blurred, T-H-E-S-W-A-G-G-Y-B-L-E-R-D. Uh find me on all the socials. I will be over there on my youtube.com slash the swaggy blurred. We'll be doing Indian matchmaker. It sounds like uh Jay's on board finally. Uh other than that, you come on, come on, uh positive. It's trash. I can't help but be on board. I mean, the funny thing is, it's trash in the sense that it's another reality program, but it's not in the sense that it's actually really well done. Oh, it's a reality show. It's it's like a, it's almost like a docu series reality. You show. said it was like like it was a TV. The way you were describing. No no, it. no 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 no. That's the whole thing. These are real. These are so these are real people of Indian descent, whether they're from India or from America, like Indian American. And it, it's their meeting with this matchmaker. Like this woman, uh, did she, what she, she, the way she introduces herself, she goes, hi, I'm Seema from Mumbai. Like every time she does it, it'd be like, if you're like, hi, I'm Jay from Chicago. Everywhere that she fucking goes, which is bomb. But she's like, they, so uh, you know the tradition, similar to like a lot of black people do, but like in Indian tradition is everybody's an auntie or an uncle. It's like, oh, this is Seema auntie. Like, you know, and she's the matchmaker. And this is what I, uh, dude, it's dope. It's, it's genuinely dope. It's just so ridiculous. That's all I'm saying. All right, but go ahead and drop yours as you were saying. Yeah, twitch.tv slash swaggy blurred. Uh, you know, swag back, swag back Thursdays, uh, swag day fun days, and then uh, positive black people news, uh, youtube.com slash pvp news. Uh, hitting you with that last week tonight, uh, style but with positive news stories about black people. So, other than that, that's pretty much everything, y'all. Uh, Jay, go ahead and take us out, man. 
All right. With that being said, uh, we will holler at y'all talking trash TV over on the Swaggy Blurs channel. Well, over there, over on his channel. <laughs> Wait. Here. Yeah, that way. Wow, directionally challenged. <laughs> no, no, the problem is I know which way I'm pointing as me looking at the screen, but the camera has no, no, I get it, but I would normally be over that shoulder anyway. So just literally pretend like things haven't see. Look, whoops, look. <laughs> yeah, he said this. <laughs> but then what's what's funny is I did the same shit. I pointed to you on the <laughs> screen you. wrong. You normally sit on this side. I should have known better. I literally just gave a speech about it and I fucked up. But with that, we out here, y'all. We'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>